Welcome back to the channel guys, Cesare here and I want to talk about the Oscars. It's going to be an interesting one. Who's going home with a trophy and who's going home empty handed? Now, I want to start off with best actor in a leading role. I'm going to read out the nominees and I'm going to tell you guys who I think is going home with the trophy. Performance by an actor in a leading role. We have Bradley Cooper in Maestro, Coleman Domingo in Rustin, Paul Giamatti in The Holdovers, Killian Murphy in Oppenheimer, and we have Jeffrey Wright in American Fiction. I'm gonna be honest guys, I absolutely loved Killian Murphy in Oppenheimer, but I feel like some people are gonna be mad about this, but I feel like it was a linear performance. You know, the range, he didn't go that far with it. You know, it was just a linear flat performance. It was, the movie made it great because the uh, movie was focused on his performance. But overall, as a whole picture, it works well. But as singling him out with his performance, I don't think it was that great. Now, the person that's definitely gonna win this award is Paul Giamatti. It just has all the ingredients that the Academy loves. You know, you get to see him go through this entire arc and get up to a certain point where it feels like a journey. It feels well-deserved. You see him transition from being this teacher that everybody absolutely despises. And then he goes into this arc and it transforms him. He has a transformative experience and you get to see the man underneath the mask like for the first arc of the movie he has this mask on and then you get to see him slowly take that away as the movie unfolds and i feel like that type of performance is what the academy loves and i definitely think he's gonna win it and he's been doing well with the other awards and that's that's the one for me guys paul giamatti the holdovers. Next up, we have performance by an actor in a supporting role. Sterling K. Brown in American Fiction. Robert De Niro in Killers of the Flower Moon. Robert Downey Jr. in Oppenheimer. Ryan Gosling in Barbie. Mark Ruffalo in Poor Things. Okay, so I'm happy that Ryan Gosling got a nomination, you know, because I feel like that performance that he gave in Bobby, you know, just elevated the whole movie. He wasn't supposed to go that hard, you know, but he just elevated the material in a way which I feel like Margot Robbie did it. I know some people are saying Margot was snubbed, but if you look at the performance, you know, that Ryan gave compared to hers, I understand that you can't compare them basically, but I feel like Ryan's performance was more transformative. It deserves the nomination. Robert Downey Jr. in Oppenheimer. He wasn't in the movie that much, but for the sections and the parts that he appeared in the movie, he absolutely nailed it. Like after watching that movie, like his character is the one that still stays in your mind and i feel like that is all the ingredients of a brilliant performance if you finish if you're done watching a movie and there's that certain element that stands out and you're like wow was that really robert in that role you know the makeup and everything but the performance came through that makeup and i feel like he's the front runner to win this award in the supporting role like his performance was was a standout and i mean christopher nolan even mentioned in himself in an interview it was like you know i took downey to a place where not a lot of people have seen him go since like chaplin which is a remarkable achievement and i feel like he's definitely winning that okay moving along guys performance by an actress in a leading role okay we have Annette Bening 
in Nyad. Lily Gladstone, Killers of the Flower Moon, Sandra Huller, and I hope I'm saying that right, Anatomy of a Fall, Kerry Mulligan in Maestro, Emma Stone in Poor Things. Now, this is a tough one. I feel like it's neck and neck between Gladstone and Emma Stone that actually rhymes. Emma Stone delivered a performance that I think like she's the only actress that could have done that. I don't think any other actress would have been brave enough to take on the role of Bella Baxter. And it's a type of performance which, you know, you have to take it there and go even further. And I feel like as an art house performance, it almost has a theater vibe to it. It's like throwback theater where it feels like a lot of improv was done when she was doing this performance. And she definitely lost herself in that role. So for the amount of attention to detail that she put into that performance and, you know, I feel like she might just edge it, you know? I feel like she is the front runner to win in this category. But with that said, you have Lily Gladstone. Now, Lily Gladstone gave a performance that you feel for Molly, you know, when you watch that movie. Like, I feel like she gave the performance that the movie needed, but she did it in a subtle and devastating way because you feel for this character like and the way she her emotion the amount of emotion that she puts into this role you feel every instance where this person is going to hurt and pain and she did it in an effortless way like it felt effortless so this is a i don't know guys this is a difficult one but i feel like emma stone because the Academy loves art house films, I feel like Emma Stone is gonna take it for actress in a leading role. Okay, performance by an actress in a supporting role. Emily Blunt, Oppenheimer, Daniel Brooks, The Color Purple, America Ferreira in Barbie, which is a surprise, Jodie Foster in Nyad, Divine Joy Randolph in The Holdovers. I'm just gonna... Guys, this award is going to Divine Joy Randolph in The Holdovers. It was a beautiful, beautiful performance, you know? It's a character that goes through so much devastation, hurt, and pain. And yet, she finds... She hits all the right notes every time she makes an appearance on the screen. She doesn't get as much screen time as Giamatti, but she is an integral part of how this entire story unfolds, especially when it comes to Giamatti's character. She is there egging him on in terms of, you know, give the kid a break. Don't be so hard on him. And I feel like she is the glue that holds their trio together because the movie is about the tree the trio, you know, and how they spend their time over that Christmas period. So she's definitely the glue that holds that relationship together. And the performance that she gave is beautiful and also very devastating. Now, a category that I absolutely love, best animated feature. I've, I'm just gonna put it out there. I'm, I'm shocked that Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem didn't get a nomination. I I don't get it guys. That movie was a movie was perfect as an animated movie. Like I enjoyed that movie. Like when I watched it, I was tapping my feet. It was a good time. I I personally think it was the coolest movie of the year. That's how much I love that movie. And to see it not get nominated is that's a snub. That's a proper snub. Definitely. But these are the nominees. You have The Boy and the Heron, Elemental, Nimona, Robot Dreams, Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. Now there's only one movie that's taking this. I'm 100% convinced 
on a technical level, storyline, and basically just this movie set the bar very high for animation. It's a cross, despite of us. There's no way any other movie can win this, okay, except the boy and the heroine because Miyazaki, you know? But I feel like that is not vintage Miyazaki in terms of like how Spirited Away was. But I feel like what Across the Spider-Verse managed to achieve is remarkable because not only was this, this just a good animated movie, it was a good film in general. I mean, this movie can basically be put alongside some of the best movies that came out last year on a technical level. It was remarkable, you know, just seeing every frame and how the animators put that together. Technical level, it wins. Storyline was incredible because, I mean, you see how Marvel is struggling to deliver a multiverse story. But in how they are struggling, there's already a multiverse story that exists that's the best multiverse story that there is. And that's across the Spider-Verse. Moving along. Achievement in cinematography. Now, this is absolutely integral to every movie, you know? It's a very important part. Let's talk about the nominees. We have El Conde, Killers of the Flower Moon, Maestro, Oppenheimer, Poor Things. This one is gonna be between either Poor Things or Oppenheimer. And I feel like in terms of scope and scale, definitely Oppenheimer. In terms of innovation and invention, poor things. The use of the fish islands was incredible, but the grandiose scale of Oppenheimer, whoo! I think it's gonna be Oppenheimer. I think Oppenheimer is taking cinematography just because of the sheer scale. It's definitely going to Oppenheimer. I'm convinced. Oppenheimer is gonna have it's gonna steal the awards. I just have that feeling. Okay. Achievement in directing. Whew. We have some heavy hitters here, guys. And a surprise package. We have Justine Trett. I hope I'm saying that right. Anatomy of a Fall. Martin Scorsese. Legend. Killers of the Flower Moon, Christopher Nolan, Oppenheimer, Your Ghost, Lanthimos, Poor Things, Jonathan Glazer, which only he only does a movie every 10 years. The Zone of Interest. I think this is this is the year that Christopher takes it. Definitely. Christopher Nolan is taking this for Oppenheimer. I'm convinced. I would say Martin would be an obvious favorite because. I mean, guys, it's Martin Scorsese, and what he managed to achieve with Killers is absolutely incredible. But this is Christopher Nolan. This is, I mean, taking the story of Oppenheimer and delivering it on such a grandiose scale was nothing short of amazing. And telling this story from a first-person perspective, absolute genius. Absolute genius. IMAX, Christopher is, he deserves it. He definitely deserves it. I still think that he should have won it for The Dark Knight, but that's just me. Like The Dark Knight itself was an achievement, but this, this is on another level. Oppenheimer, Christopher Nolan, best director, done. Another important part of a film is sound. This is achievement in sound. Let's go. The creator, Maestro, Mission Impossible, Dead Reckoning Part 1, Oppenheimer, The Zone of Interest. Easy, guys. Oppenheimer. When it comes to sound, Christopher mixed the visuals and the sound in a way where, guys, <laughs> like, Oppenheimer is a cinematic achievement. You know, it's 
it wasn't my number one movie of the year, but it came in at second because it was. <whistles> Oppenheim is gonna have a big night. I'm convinced. Moving along, visual effects. Let's see. We have the creator, Godzilla minus one, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three. Mission Impossible, Dead Reckoning Part 1, and Napoleon. This one is going to go to Godzilla Minus 1. I'm convinced. I feel like Godzilla Minus 1 was an eye-opener for Hollywood to see that you don't need to have a movie that costs $200 million for it to be and look absolutely incredible. You know, some of the budgets on these movies are on another level, and when you look at it, you're like, wow. How did they get this done? Godzilla minus one showed everybody that you can still reach new heights and the budget doesn't have to be that big. As long as it blends in, it looks authentic, then you have a winner on your hands. I also feel like the creator was incredible because of what they managed to achieve on that budget as well. So it's between the creator and minus one, but I feel like minus one is gonna edge it. Visual effects goes to Godzilla minus one. Now, this is the big one. Some of the other categories, guys, you know, it's just, you don't really care for them when you watch the show. But this is numero uno. This is the big one. This is the bragging rights. If you go home with this one, it's massive, it's huge. Let's look at the nominees. Number one, American Fiction, Anatomy of a Fall, Barbie, The Holdovers, Killers of the Flower Moon, Maestro, Oppenheimer, Past Lives, Poor Things, The Zone of Interest. Okay, now I'm gonna go through all of these movies and I'm gonna let you, get, let you guys know what I think. American Fiction is the one I haven't seen, so I'm not going to comment on that one. Anatomy of a Fall was absolutely incredible. It's a remarkable achievement, and the fact that that movie is even recognized here at the Academy Awards is an achievement. I don't want to spoil anything when it comes to this movie, so if you guys haven't watched Anatomy of a Fall, do yourself a favor. It's incredible. Bobby, Bobby certainly surprised me. Bobby was the surprise package of last year. You know, everybody went in expecting a certain type of movie and what you actually got was something more meaningful. I mean, Greta Gerwig, Margot Robbie, Ryan Gosling delivered something that had a deeper meaning, you know, especially when it comes to feminism. It was the way they put this together. I mean, even the production design, costume design, I feel like all those accolades, they definitely deserve. It's a little bit of a, with Margot Robbie, I understand, you know, because there was a lot of other performances that was top notch. But I also feel like Greta Gerwig was snubbed for me personally, because taking something that everybody views in a certain way and delivering it in such a way where people are like, wow, I didn't expect this. And I mean, that in itself is a remarkable achievement. So that movie, the biggest surprise for me of last year. The Holdovers. Now the Holdovers is vintage Alexander Payne, you know, and then the fact that he got Paul Giamatti on board. That movie just works. That movie might become one of my favorite Christmas movies. It's one of those movies that you have to watch when it's the holiday season because it has a deeper meaning and the way it's executed with that vintage 1970s look was remarkable guys and the trio of actors on display there I think the holdovers in terms of acting it's going to be massive it's going to win leading actor and it's going to win best supporting actress I'm absolutely convinced Killers of the Flower Moon was was Martin Scorsese at his very best. I mean, I, I can't stop talking about Martin Scorsese. He's a director that has also made me fall in love with the medium of film. I mean, I absolutely love Goodfellas. Departed, 
Shutter Island, you know, The Aviator, Gangs of New York. I can go the list is endless. This guy has I think he might be one of the only directors that doesn't have a bad movie in his entire catalog. And that is something that speaks for itself. It's another collaboration with Leonardo DiCaprio, Robert De Niro and Lily Gladstone. First time for Lily Gladstone. But that combination of him, Leo and Robert has given so much to cinema and to see that in this movie is remarkable and what i loved what martin managed to do is the manner in which he told the story of the old sage it was done with respect and admiration and you know it was done in the right way and i feel like even i don't want to spoil anything but the ending of how he decides to end the movie is unlike anything i've seen in recent cinema it's risky you know but it's done in such a way where you're like wow i haven't i haven't seen this on film it's innovative it's remarkable so killers of the flower moon is an absolute masterpiece then we have maestro i kind of feel like maestro is the one movie here that i would have swapped out as good as maestro was bradley cooper absolutely lost himself in that role Carey Mulligan elevated the movie you know with her performance. I feel like that's I feel like that's Carey Mulligan's movie. That's just my opinion. I would have liked to see Across the Spider-Verse sneak in here, you know. I I would have loved to see Across the Spider-Verse get nominated for best picture. I feel like that would have been an achievement. Animation they don't get enough recognition when it comes to this category. I mean, you've had uh Beauty and the Beast and Toy Story 3 being nominated but that's there's never been another animated feature that has gotten into this category but that's just me Oppenheimer Oppenheimer is a remarkable achievement in cinema I mean what Christopher Nolan managed to achieve with that movie is nothing short of amazing Killian Murphy delivers a career defining performance which If Paul Giamatti wasn't in the holdovers, he would have been the front runner to get that award. I feel a movie told from a first person perspective on such a scale is on another level. I don't think I've seen anything like this. And then you have Oppenheimer and Barbie with the whole Barbenheimer thing. That was just an event that I feel like cinema personally needed. That was remarkable. Now, the one nominee here that has me very excited and I'm happy that this movie got nominated is Past Lives. Celine Song's directorial debut is an absolute masterpiece. It is my favorite movie of last year. I just feel like the movie hits all the right notes. It's subtle, it's beautiful, it's painful, it's devastating. All that ingredients mixed into one. The fact that this is Celine Song's directorial debut is is genius. I don't know how she managed to pull that off, and that is another win for A24. Past lives. I'm very happy with that nomination, guys. So it just makes me feel like my best movie of the year actually deserves to be uh, deserves to be recognized. Next up we have Poor Things. Now, Poor Things is that type of movie that's very divisive. You know, some people will love it, some people will hate it. Yogos just went all in with this movie. He took the book, he adapted it and he just stuck to the material. He I'm sure he probably told himself like I have a vision I'm going to stick to it and that's what I'm going to put out and that's exactly what he did. Some people might feel like you know it's too over sexualized, but if you look at the concept and all that, look beyond those type of things when you watch the movie like look at how he's trying to tell the story and then I feel like you'll find some substance there. I just feel like because it's such a divisive movie it won't win best picture i think like that's the only reason i think it won't win 
the zone of interest i'm not a huge fan of the zone of interest guys i watched it and it's one of those movies because of what it's about you can only watch it once it's executed to perfection by jonathan glazer but you can only watch this thing once and you're like Whew. this list is absolutely insane guys but i'm gonna say Oppenheimer, guys definitely i'm I'm saying Oppenheimer and I'm sticking to that. I'm absolutely convinced that Oppenheimer and what it managed to achieve for cinema this year, not in, not just in terms of how it did at the box office, but in terms of what Christopher Nolan managed to achieve with this movie. I feel like this is gonna be Oppenheimer's night and the only award that Oppenheimer's gonna miss out on is leading actor for Killian Murphy. I don't think he's gonna take it. I think Paul Giamatti is the front runner for that. But the rest of the awards, I feel like it's gonna be a clean sweep for Oppenheimer. And there you have it guys, that's my prediction for the Oscars. You know, predictions is just my point of view. I might not be right. There might be some changes or, you know, complete surprises you never know like sometimes award shows can just blow you out of the water i mean what if past lives wins best picture Whew. that would be incredible but i definitely think it's oppenheimer's year oppenheimer's gonna kill it please let me know what you guys think about this this is my predictions my reaction to the whole thing comment down below let me know and I will definitely catch you guys on the next one. I think I'll do another video when we have the winners and then we'll go through that and dissect it. You know, you have to dissect it. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button, guys. That's it for me.